Service Tiger Wing B748, 1 miles north of Andrews, 500 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. With the inauguration of a new U.S. president, discussions about the future of Air Force One are in full swing. The president continues to fly aboard two highly modified Boeing 747 to 200 aircraft designated VC-25A. These planes, ordered during Ronald Reagan's presidency, have served as the nation's flying White House since their delivery in 1990 during George H. W. Bush's administration. For decades, these iconic jets have ferried presidents across the globe, standing as a symbol of American power and diplomacy. However, after 30 years of service, the VC-25 as retirement looms, ushering in the era of a new pair of jets that promise to be even more advanced and capable. The current VC-25A aircraft are more than just jets. They are symbols of the presidency and the United States. Their immense historical significance means their fate after retirement is still uncertain, but it's likely that, much like previous presidential aircraft, they will avoid the scrapyard. Many of the earlier Air Force One aircraft, such as the Boeing 707s, have been preserved and put on display. For instance, SAM 970 is at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, SAM 2600 is at the U.S. Air Force Museum in Ohio, and SAM 27000 is at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California. The George and Barbara Bush Foundation has expressed interest in acquiring one of the current 747s to display at the Bush Presidential Library in Texas. Preserving a 747, however, is a far more complex and costly endeavor than maintaining a smaller 707. Plans to replace the VC-25A have been in the works for over a decade, mainly due to the aging airframe and the escalating costs of maintaining and upgrading the 747 to 200 series. The U.S. Air Force determined in 2009 that the planes needed replacing to meet future air traffic control requirements and ensure the president's safety and communication needs. Updating the current planes was deemed too expensive, and a total replacement was considered the most practical option. The Air Force considered a variety of aircraft, including models from Airbus, but in the end, the Boeing 747-8 was selected as the best replacement for the presidential fleet. Though Airbus was invited to submit proposals, it declined, citing the impracticality of assembling the A380 in the United States for only a few aircraft. Even if Airbus had proceeded, the A380 faced its own limitations, including accessibility issues at many airports, which would have hindered its ability to serve as Air Force One. Boeing 747-8 was ultimately chosen in 2015 during the Obama administration, a decision that would set the stage for the future of Air Force One. With its long history of producing Air Force One jets, Boeing was the logical choice and the new 747-8 aircraft are undergoing extensive modifications to prepare them for their presidential role. <music> President Donald Trump made headlines in 2016 when he criticized the cost of the new Air Force One jets, estimated at over $5 billion. He tweeted his displeasure, claiming the costs were out of control, and called for the order to be cancelled. After assuming office, Trump negotiated with Boeing, claiming to have reduced the cost by $1.4 billion. Switching to pre-existing aircraft, initially intended for the now-defunct Russian airline Transaero, helped reduce some costs, but the savings remain unclear. Nonetheless, the modifications required to outfit the aircraft for presidential use, such as advanced communication systems and security features, ensure that any such project will be expensive. By 2019, reports indicated that the total cost for the new Air Force One program had reached approximately $5.3 billion, factoring in all necessary modifications, testing, and new hangar facilities at Andrews Air Force Base. Modifications to the aircraft include reinforced fuselage to protect against electromagnetic pulses, retractable air stairs for independent operation, countermeasures against missile attacks, and extensive communication systems. However, unlike its predecessor, the new aircraft will not include mid-air refueling capability, 
a feature that was never used and was seen as essential during the Cold War. Despite the high costs and delays, the new aircraft are expected to significantly upgrade the current VC-25A. However, there's still much to be revealed about their interiors and specific features. It remains to be seen how much influence the new president will have on the final design and interior layout. Historically, First Ladies have had a significant say in Air Force One's interior decoration. For example, Nancy Reagan's preference for a design reflecting the American Southwest influenced the layout of the current 747s. President Trump expressed interest in making the new jets more luxurious, including larger beds and more opulent interiors. However, whether those changes come to fruition depends on the current administration's decisions. One of the most talked about aspects of the new Air Force One is its exterior livery, which holds both symbolic and historical significance. The current blue and white color scheme, designed by famed industrial designer Raymond Lowy, has adorned the presidential aircraft since the Kennedy administration in the early 1960s. Lowy's design has become iconic, representing not only the aircraft itself, but also the office of the presidency and the United States on the world stage. The sleek, polished aesthetic of the blue and white planes, often photographed during major diplomatic visits or state functions, has become a visual embodiment of American leadership and dignity. This design has been a steadfast symbol of the executive branch for nearly six decades and remains one of the most instantly recognizable color schemes in aviation history. However, a potential change in this long-standing tradition was introduced during Donald Trump's presidency. Trump proposed a bold new design that would dramatically alter the plane's exterior, suggesting a departure from the Lowy design that had been in place for nearly 60 years. His proposed color scheme replaced the classic soft blue and white with a striking combination of red, white, and dark blue, reminiscent of the American flag. The design was patriotic with deeper tones and stronger contrast, emphasizing a more modern and assertive look. Trump was reportedly deeply involved in the process and even displayed a scale model of the redesigned Air Force One in the Oval Office. His plan for the new color scheme sparked significant debate, with some praising the fresh look and others lamenting the possible end of an iconic tradition that has been admired by many around the world. As of January 2021, with President Biden's administration in place, the decision to keep Trump's proposed redesign or revert to the traditional livery remained undecided. Early in his presidency, Biden's administration confirmed that the president had not yet focused on Air Force One's color scheme, leaving the question of its final appearance open. There is still ample time for deliberation, as the new jets are expected to be delivered by 2024. The ultimate decision could shape the visual identity of Air Force One for future decades, potentially aligning the aircraft with Biden's vision for the presidency or preserving the design that has been a hallmark of presidential history for generations. Whether the administration chooses to maintain the classic blue and white or adopt Trump's red, white and dark blue design, the choice will likely be a point of discussion and a lasting feature of Air Force One's legacy. While the new planes are set to be delivered by the end of 2024, any delays could push the timeline into the next presidential term. If President Biden serves only one term, he may have limited time to fly aboard the new jets before handing over the reins to his successor. In the meantime, work continues to convert the two Boeing 747 to eight aircraft for presidential use. The U.S. Air Force Life Cycle Management Center recently announced that it had started installing structural upgrades, including new super panels that will allow for internal air stairs and other mission-critical modifications. As the new jets prepare for their debut, the U.S. government is already looking toward the future. While the new 747-8s are expected to serve for several decades, the end of 747 production means their eventual replacements will likely be different aircraft altogether. Some speculate that Boeing's upcoming 777X could be a suitable candidate, offering advanced technology and reduced fuel consumption. 
there is also growing interest in supersonic transport. In 2021, the U.S. Air Force partnered with Boom Supersonic to explore using supersonic jets for VIP and presidential travel. While it may be some time before supersonic jets are part of the presidential fleet, the partnership signals a forward-thinking approach to air travel. In conclusion, the next generation of Air Force One is on the horizon, promising to deliver enhanced capabilities and cutting-edge technology. With the plane scheduled for delivery by 2024, the current administration has ample time to make decisions on design and features. Whether the new president will opt for Trump's proposed changes or stick with tradition remains to be seen, but one thing is clear. Air Force One will continue to be a powerful symbol of the American presidency for years to come.